Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Uh, so I saw the movie Ponyan Selvan part 1. I went for a morning show, but I didn't immediately review the movie after coming back home. Uh, I, I, I needed some time to kind of sit with it to think about it because I had certain, certain mixed feelings about this movie and I'll get to that. But overall, what I want to state is that, you know, uh, this is definitely a big screen movie. It delivers on the movie experience, especially when you're watching it in a movie theater. The sound, the music, the visuals, you know, it's a treat to watch it in a movie theater. Definitely worth the experience. So if you are going to the movie theater, I would say it's going to be worth it. However, I do want to stress that this is not a mass commercial movie like an RRR or a Bahubali. Instead, go into watch an epic period drama because that's what the story is about. Maniratnam, in my opinion, is sort of the Steven Spielberg of Indian cinema, especially the kind of movies he made in the 80s and 90s. I'm a big fan of his work. So with Ponyan Selvan, he's sort of making a big comeback of sorts and that too with a big star cast. And for the most part, he's given us a truly classic epic period drama. But this is a movie that relies on its storytelling experience to capture the attention of the audience. And for that reason, I would say this is a direct movie but this movie has several shortcomings uh, like I said earlier this movie delivers on the big screen experience however there are several action set pieces or hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes that are not done quite well this is where you would compare things to uh, a Rajamouli movie like uh, you know RRR or Bahubali the action pieces were really good it was really entertaining I'm not talking about you know punching lions and tigers and throwing them onto other people that's not what I'm referring to but think about RRR the introduction scene of Ram Charan, you know, how he goes into uh, battle with, uh, you know, thousands of people and just to arrest one guy or Junior NTR's introduction scene and all that, you know, uh, I'm not talking about again the VFX, but, you know, the whole imagination idea behind executing those action scenes, you know, because we saw all of that, you know, when it comes to the action scenes of Ponyan Selvan, I believe it's, it's, it's a letdown of sorts, you know, because there are many scenes where I was watching and I'm like, okay, this looks epic, this looks huge, but when they cut to those tight close-up shots, you know, where the uh, protagonist is uh, fighting someone you know you know you see the protagonist swing a sword and then suddenly there are quick uh, jump cuts and you see this person following down or you see in certain angles where you know certain piece, people are following down and you know it, it looks very amateurish and in especially after watching everything that we we saw with movies like RRR and Bahubali you know because we saw those movies uh, you know some of the action scenes over here feels uh, kind of like a letdown for me personally because like I said this is an epic period drama you're watching this on the big screen you need those big action set pieces to work so when the camera goes for wide shots you know they look spectacular and then we cut to the close shots where people are you know uh, you know fighting each other with swords and things like that there you know it looks a little strange and it looks awkward kind of amateurish in my opinion uh, so that's where I feel you know certain things you know they kind of let you down basically you know when it comes to the action in this movie uh, it lacks energy, it lacks intensity, um, you know, as a viewer when you're watching it, it feels like, uh, it feels like they're acting, like, unfortunately, yeah, that's how it feels, like. I, I'm not blaming the actors or the set pieces or anything like that, the idea is there, but the execution of these action set pieces, you know, it, it I don't know, it lacked uh, energy, it lacked authenticity, uh, you know, the, it felt kind of lazy, you know, like it's sort of like they did it uh, last minute. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but uh, you know, that's the way I felt. And uh, personally for me, you know, I'm, I'm not comparing Hollywood movies, but I saw Indian movies this year itself, you know, b with better action sequences. So a movie of this scale with this much budget, you know, I just feel like they didn't deliver on the action side of things. Now coming to the story itself, uh, this is adapted from a novel. I haven't read it, so I don't know much about the story. Uh, all I know is what I saw in the movie today. And for most part, it's a very interesting story. Um, you know, I don't want to give anything away because there are a couple of spoilers in the story. If you haven't seen it, you know, it's definitely you want to experience that in the movie theaters. But the point of that is that, you know, this is about the Chora Empire. So let's say there's a king, you know, he has sons, they are princes, they are ruling different parts of the, you know, empire. Uh, so within the uh, what in the kingdom itself, you know, he's got ministers and other officials who, you know, work for the king. Uh, you know, they are sort of planning a coup or a mutiny where they want to replace the rule with someone else. So there's a lot of plotting, there's a lot of conspiring and things like that. So 
that's really interesting to watch you know as you discover the story which is why i said you know this is this is a movie that relies on its storytelling uh, uh, storytelling uh, structure to give you that experience when you're watching the movie uh, so for most part the storytelling is pretty good you know there the director has really succeeded because you know he keeps you hooked he you know he keeps you interested in seeing how the story is going to evolve and where these characters are going now coming to the story itself i would say the most interesting character in this movie is that of Aishwarya Rai Bachchan's character. She plays the character of Nandini. Now, Aishwarya Rai is a very beautiful woman. I I'm not the first person to say it. But in this movie, when she comes on screen, like the first time when she appeared on screen, no, within the movie theater itself, everyone took a deep breath, you know, because, you know, it was not just that she's beautiful and graceful, you know, it felt natural, like a real princess had appeared on screen, you know, the way she, uh, you know, her carried herself, the way she talked, there's so much grace and, you know, everything was so effortless and natural. It's a very interesting character. Uh, you're not entirely sure whose uh, side she's on, you know, uh, <laughs> for a while she appears to be on one side and then after a few scenes she appears to be on another side. So there's a lot of suspense over there and I don't think, you know, they fully answer the question also. So obviously we go going into part two maybe they'll give a clear answer the next character which i thought was really interesting was vikram's character but be warned especially if you're a vikram fan uh, vikram in totality of the movie screen time because this movie is almost three hours long you know in totality i would say vikram maybe has only 10 minutes of screen time he's there at the beginning of the movie uh, then close to the interval he's there for a little bit then post interval also in the second half of the movie he's there a little bit but overall if you were to you know kind of time his entire presence in the movie i would say it might come up to 10 minutes that's it he's got a very uh, small role over here probably has m you know more to do in the second part you know with just a few minutes of screen time he is conveying so much and it leaves an impression on you so i was really impressed like i came in expecting like okay chian vikram he's the leading man of the movie you know i came expecting that but uh, even though the movie starts with him and he's kind of there in important parts of the movie uh, he's not there throughout and uh, he's not the main character we're following in the story as well. he's involved in the main story his character is definitely involved in the main story but we don't really see him throughout the movie. So, and like I said, just, just like with Aishwarya Rai's character, his character also, there's some backstory there. There are, there are more, definitely more elements left to expose. So probably in the second part. Now, surprisingly, the one character who's there uh, throughout the runtime of this movie, I would say from start to finish, maybe about 80 to 90% of the runtime, it's Karthi's character. Uh, he's not the protagonist in any way. However, we as the viewer is experiencing the story story through his uh, journeys because his character is going to different locations in this movie and that's how we're discovering the plot you know that's how that's what's taking the story forward so he's kind of uh, he's kind of a narrator without actually narrating anything it's sort of him going somewhere and meeting someone and you know learning something and that's how we are learning also something and that's how we are discovering something etc now coming to jm ravi he's Ponyan Selva and there's a story behind you know why he's called Ponyan Selva it's an interesting character and he's like I said it's a very restrained performance from Jam Ravi said and then there's Trisha of course she's a princess in this movie uh, she is um, I would say that you know her, what her character does is that you know her character is supposed to be this bold uh, powerful character in I mean back in those days you know it's always men making the decisions so she is that uh, character who can actually step up and talk to men and we see that in a few sequences here and there and one of the men also when she goes away he makes the comment you know, who is she to come here and uh, you know make these decisions and things like that so her character especially is supposed to be this really strong really powerful character but again it's shown through her performance there are also more characters in this movie uh, i just summarized with certain memorable and interesting characters in the movie i thought you know i'll share that with you now this is a part one movie uh, the climax is a very interesting you know this is a big action set piece actually involving a ship and other boats etc resulting in a cliffhanger ending uh, here's my criticism i would say uh, as soon as the movie ended, they showed PS2 2023. So yes, it's coming out next year. Uh, so as a viewer, when I saw it, I was like, okay, when the part when part two comes out, I'll watch it. You know, that was sort of my uh, reaction to it. You know, 
uh, but you know i didn't really feel the anticipation oh i can't wait to see part two you know that feeling wasn't there it was more like all right i'll, I'll check it out when it comes out you know so for my final rating i'm going to give this three out of five it definitely delivers on the big screen experience with certain interesting characters but not always with its story and lack of exciting action sequences it's definitely worth a watch but watch it in a movie theater that's it for my review guys if you like this video hit the thumbs up icon and of course subscribe to my channel for more reviews and videos like this and do share your thoughts about the movie in the comments below i would love to read them thank you for watching have a great day bye